What up everyone, it's your boy Martin Lewis T Real, welcome to my channel where I call out fake ass bitches and talk about YouTube drama. I say so today we got a lot of drama. It's meant to be uploaded on Friday. I know it's not Friday. I apologize. Last week I was meant to upload the Friday thing. I couldn't because I was on the plane. A lot of drama. So make sure you stay to the end because there's a lot of people I'm talking about today that I couldn't fit in the thumbnail. I'll try to have a list of names so you guys can know who I'm talking about or whatever. So if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button with the bell, smash that like button, and let's get this video, guys. It actually works. Please, let's get this video to 1,000 likes and 1,000 comments. Go right there. It helps me a lot. i just like to thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys. You are freaking awesome. Helps me out a lot. I didn't realize it actually does do anything, but it actually does. So... Please spam the comment section below, like this video up, let's try to get it to 2,000, but I would love it to get at least 1,000 comments and 1,000 likes. If you want me to talk about anything or have any story or leads, all my social media links are in the description below. So let's get straight into the weekly drama. The first thing I want to quickly cover today is the parrot scammer. So as you guys know, I made a video recently about this guy. And basically what he did was pretend to save birds. And he would ask people to give him money, right? And he wasn't saving birds. He was basically scamming people, tricking people. It's a really good video. I suggest you go watch it. He has now deleted everything. All his social medias. I believe, allegedly, he has something on Facebook, I think. He actually contacted me and tried to get me to take down the video. And the only way for me to do an interview with him and ask him the tough questions was to get rid of this video. Bullshit, I'm not falling for your tricks. Not happening, buddy. The video's staying up. I'm not taking it down. Really, we're sorry you really care about your fans, your audience, the people that supported you in the past. You would have done it anyway. Not try to make some stupid bullshit up. Oh, if you take the video down, I'll do an interview. You, you, I'm not that stupid. You must really think I'm stupid. Now for the next drama. So big shout out to Reality Check because she had some screenshots that I thought I took, but... I guess I didn't, and she gave me a downloaded video of this as well. John Cookian uploaded a video called Beauty Gurus Dragging the Beauty KKW Beauty for four minutes straight. Now, that video was actually taken by a YouTuber named Mitchell Wiggs. I thought I said Mitchell Niggs for a sec. <laughs> what is that? And he did the video one week before he did it, alright? But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys the video and what John Cookian took. Roll it. The sticker on the back is crooked. But I feel like sometimes like for the price point of what you're paying, you do want everything to be just nice and like perfect. And there was a lot of people online that were like, Jeffrey, this looks like Kylie's peach palette. It looks like the Kylie Cosmetics palette. Both retail for $45. Both of their sisters, their Kardashians, all like that. This like brown, I don't know why I couldn't read the back. I was like, wait. And then of course, you know, this lighter cream shade. We've all seen a light cream shade like that done before. It's nothing that's like brand, brand new. I do want to point out though, something I'm noticing, there's kickback in the pan, see? It's nothing like, you know, yeah, Anastasia. Yeah. What is this mud? If you blend it too much, it does get this weird kind of stain that isn't that attractive, so. Shadows like this, they always run very muddy and gray on me, and it looks disgusting, and I don't like it. And that looks really weird. I'm just gonna say it. Some shadows, I feel like, or some shadow palettes are formulated to be for a lighter complexion. As you can see, I did this, and it all kind of like gathered right there. You wipe them off and see what that does. Well, that's lighter than I thought it was gonna be. No, I thought it was darker. Mm. I mean, at first I was like, mm. it's giving me drugstore, it's giving me wet and wild, and then when they explain that it's kind of supposed to be a geode or like a crystal moment, I get it. I'm just like, girl. I expected a little more with this. Let's keep it real. I am a little disappointed that the names aren't at the bottom. Like, you guys know how I feel about that. It's not the most pigment I've ever seen in a shadow. I have, of course, seen these two colors done before. This shade right here almost reminds me a little bit of Max Saddle. The packaging I do not love. I definitely think if this is gonna be Kim K, it should have been, like, way crazier. The packaging doesn't speak to me. It's, it's just kind of like, wah, wah. 
Oh. To me, it's like Stila Magnificent Metals. It may not be for me, but hey, it's a lip gloss. I'm gonna say something that I think is not. I'm gonna just do like an extreme close up where you can see some of the bleeding and whatnot. You can see some bleeding right in here. That is the stuff that I talk about a lot that drives me so insane. And then over here, it was just too wet where it just smeared everywhere. So I'm gonna have to kind of touch up my makeup. I am not like the biggest nude fan ever. My main issue is the blue and this maroony purple shade because the maroony purple shade is shimmery. I wish this wasn't shimmery. <laughs> I was underwhelmed by it. I did want more from it. Like I wanted more of that kind of brown tan to come out. Sometimes you'll get a palette and you blend the colors together and you're like, now I know you shady bitches thought that just like Kylie, Kim took me off the PR list. She can actually take some criticism. I'm going to be reviewing the KKW X Mario collab. The brand new KKW and Mario collection. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> My first impressions of the PR kit are I was just expecting a little bit more. The lip products, I don't know if they're worth 18, 20 bucks. Yeah, I'm not quite sold on this. And I also don't really like the color. So yeah, not a fan of that. The formulation of them were just a little bit too thick for my liking. I wasn't a fan like of the colors. The shade is definitely a little bit chunkier. So you are gonna have a little bit of glitter fluffing everywhere. There's a little bit of fallout. I tried to clean off the fallout I had. I guess it turned like a light blue color right there. Oh, I see a little fallout. All right, so there is a little bit of fallout. Now that's what you call fallout, folks. Definitely put your foundation on last so you don't look like this. After blending, you kind of lose all, yeah. you know, strength and power, so. But for me, it kind of drowns me out a little bit. So this is the Natasha Denona. It usually ends up translating really kind of muddy and almost black with a little bit of navy in it. KKW and Mario, they, it's just not as good. Now when I first saw this, I was like, girl, what the fuck? Like, t <laughs> Kim, what is going on? What I do wish is that this was like a hard plastic or like it weighed as much as my ass. Like that, so. Ah! Now, if you look in my movie editor, this is um, Michael's, this is John Cookian's. He took the whole clip and mixed everything together like he got the whole video and cut pieces out, put them in different areas to make it look like his video. The only bit he didn't use was the little piece at the end here. That's the only piece he didn't use. Everything else he took from Michael Wiggs. No. <laughs> She's gone and lost her mind. Okay, I need to take a shower and scrub this off and scrub this off and call it a day. It did fall, like it fell out like right here. That's why it looks a little kind of funky right here. Um, I had to wipe it away and it kind of just stuck a little bit. Nick, See? I'm sorry, but your glam has not been mastered. What the oh! hell? Oh my God, you don't like this? Like, anyway, John Cookie tried to do some damage control. But he tried to do this in a video called Jaclyn Hill and John Split. What happened? We're gonna go through that and I'm gonna add my commentary and debunk his bullshit. Play it. Second of all, there was a channel on YouTube that goes by the name of Mitchell and the way that I came across this channel was I think he slid into my DMs about eight months ago. John Cookie didn't even show the message in a screenshot. So, you know, with John, you have to ask proof for everything because he's full of shit. Mitchell Wiggs posted in the YouTube community section on his channel saying when John Cookian says you slid into his DMs but the lie detector test determined that was a lie. 12th December the 17th, 2017. And then he posts a screenshot of John Cookian liking his photos. So he actually liked his photos allegedly on December 2017. Allegedly John Cookian was liking his pictures when one of Mitchell's videos went viral. And I didn't reply to him, and I asked my friend Rich about it, and Rich told me that this child- I am not friends with John Cookian, okay? I am not. I do not- That's interesting, because Rich Luck says that he's not friends with him. It is a possibility that they have made up, and they are friends now. 
you know, Rich Lux is pretty sneaky and doesn't usually like people knowing about his friendships that he has because it's a conflict of interest with the other friends that he has made on social media. Rich told me that this channel basically survived from re-uploading viral videos. This YouTube channel makes near to $250,000 a year just from re-uploading other people's viral videos. No originality, no edits himself, he literally just re-uploads other people's edits. $250,000 a year. And quite publicly, like, this YouTuber is out there buying, like, Louis Vuitton handbags and showing off with how much money he's making from other people's videos. Now we're gonna see if that's true, if he does upload other people's videos. Let's have a look. Logan Paul issues an apology following massive backlash after posting footage of a dead body. Yo, are you alive? Are you with us? The YouTube star was vlogging while traveling through what's known as Suicide Forest at Mount Fuji in Japan. Um, um this is commentary. What the fuck? This, this literally probably just fun vlog. And actually, that guy. The most real vlog I've ever made. In his newly released apology video, a much more serious call tries to such a sensitive subject, body he found, as a means of making himself richer, nothing more. Oh, like I said, I made it. John, this is commentary. What the hell? Like, just because he put that, you think... <laughs> John, you're so dumb. John didn't even watch the video. He assumed just because it said, Logan Paul deletes suicide video plus apology, he thinks it was just a re-uploaded video. But... Let's look at the others. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh my god, that's scary. Okay, this is a re-uploaded video, and he didn't give credit to the person who actually owns this video, saying that these videos, so many people re-upload these videos, bro. These are the types of videos that people upload and don't put it onto YouTube or someone took it from someone else and then they... These are the type of videos everyone takes and puts it out there. But look, this is the difference between Mitchell and John Cookian. Mitchell's not saying, this is my video, guys. John Cookian implies that it's his one of his transformative content by saying... Oh, I'm doing one of these quick little edits instead of going, oh, I took someone's video, I cut it into pieces and moved everything around to make it look like it was one of my videos. What John Cookie is trying to do is to basically distract you from the fact that he stole someone's transformative content and uploaded it and claimed it as his own in his own freaking description. That's what he's trying to do with all this bullshit. She said she has a story to tell. I'm sure she'll be selling that story. We'll see. Well, yeah, she will. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Okay, that's another transformative content there, but hey, let's look if he actually stole that from anyone. Hi, good riddance, goodbye. Her departure was the... She'll be selling that story. We'll see. Well, yeah, she will. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Is based on you see, that's transformative awesome. content that he has. That... Unless John Cookian can point out where he actually took that transformative content, then John Cookian will have a case. Wow. Okay, so he took a little bit of someone's video. Again, is he claiming it that is that it's his video? Nope. Okay, again, he took someone's mobile upload. It's a common thing on YouTube. People taking other people's uploads and making money from it. And these are mobile uploads where basically someone uploads a video, not realizing the impact they have with what they filmed at a concert and how much money they can actually make if they were to upload that little piece of the concept and use some good tags into their video for them to get a few views and make a couple of bucks off. A lot of people don't realize that. And you have people like um, Mitchell Wiggs who will take those videos and upload it onto their channel, add some tags, get some views out of it, get some money out of it. The thing is, a lot of people do this and you can, I bet you any money, you find one of those uploads onto YouTube, you would never find the original uploader. You would never find the original person who uploaded that onto the internet because everyone takes 
that type of content from everyone and uploads it, saying that this could be transformative content. Like the way it's edited and cutted and stuff. How do I know this isn't transformative? This could be transformative content. Again, this is just a reason John Cookian is just pointing this out because he doesn't want to take responsibility for his bullshit yet again and be like, okay, I took someone's transformative content, their whole video, and try to claim it to be mine. Mitchell Wiggs is obviously someone who will take someone's upload and take advantage of that and make money out of it. Is there anything wrong with that? Me personally, if he was like to claim that it's his and he was there and all that, then you're a, a bullshit artist. But really, I don't really see anything wrong with that. I think stuff like that is, it's kind of like a win-win situation in a way on social media. You take someone's upload from their mobile phone, you upload it onto YouTube and you can make money out of it. Like shit. You guys could take my Instagram stories, my Snapchat stories, upload that onto YouTube, and you could probably get a little bit of money out of that. Now, ethically, morally, I'm not going to sit here and be the judge of that if that is wrong for Mitchell and these other YouTubers to take people's Instagram stories and Snapchats and upload it onto YouTube. He, Ulti O'Shea, does that as well. Personally, I don't feel there's anything wrong with it. These YouTubers, most of the time, they love getting re-uploaded onto Ulti O'Shea, for example. They be making fake drama stories just to get on Ulti all shade seriously so a lot of you know yes they make money and also the other person benefits because it gets they get more publicity that way you know legally i don't know if it's against the law or not if like if his channel can be taken if like p Mia was like yo you took my video and made money out of I, honestly i wonder if she even cares she probably does not even care if I was to tell her, hey, do you know people are taking some of your Snapchat stories and uploading it onto YouTube and making thousands of dollars a year? I wonder if she would care, you know? So morally, I don't know if it's wrong. I personally don't think it's wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I'm one of those people that I personally don't care, you know? I'm like, if someone did that to my stories and was making thousands of dollars... I probably honestly wouldn't care. Like, shit, you're giving me publicity if you're getting thousands of dollars and putting my name out there and pushing me onto the YouTube. I personally don't think I would care, but other people are different. So I guess it depends on a person-to-person -person basis. But it's funny, though, how John Cookian's pointing this out to distract the shit that he has done. He's trying to blind you, so... You gotta look at that as well. Is that this guy actually copyright striked his channel, like copyright striked Rich's channel because this guy re-uploaded someone else's video. Rich used a clip of it in one of his videos and this guy was like, nope, nope, using my video even though it was a clip. Now allegedly according to a source, Rich Lux actually took a video from Mitchell. A whole video allegedly did the same thing that John Cookian did. Allegedly, he striped it. This was a long time ago, according to my source. Saying that, I don't know if it's true or not because I wasn't there. I haven't seen it myself. So in this video that I did, I think I used probably no more than 16 seconds of video footage. The rest of it is from all over the place. 16 seconds, bitch, you know you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't 16 seconds, bro. That ain't 16 seconds. That's what. Damn, how many minutes is that? You're full of shit. <laughs> now for the next drama. So basically, someone was on live and Chris was talking in the background and he was shit talking his two close friends, Almond Milk and Luntre. Juan is the most childish person and go and ask Parker if she don't charge it. Anyway, Trey took it to his Twitter and posted, I'm about to vent and keep it real. I've been call gay my whole life. But I'm so glad I stopped letting others say affect me. Because if I wouldn't have, I would have not be where I am today. When I was younger, I would have even showcased that I could sing because 
When I did, people would call me gay, gay. Whenever I would walk in a room full of people that didn't know me, I would be quiet the whole time and people would mistake it as his side. But I really wasn't. I would tell myself to not open your mouth cause if you do, they'll think you're gay. And whenever I didn't listen to myself, the impression they would always get of me was, he's gay. And don't get me wrong, in school, I was always popular, and the girls loved the F out of me. And I've always had a girlfriend, but they would secretly strap a dildo, I mean, embarrassed because people in school would make fun of them for dating me because I was supposedly gay. But I was ALR because I knew one day they was gonna want me back. A few of them wanna be on my some serious shit now. But I had to hit them with the DET. And I would have a crust on a girl when I was so younger and not even want to talk around her because I would think she heard my voice and she would think I'm gay and not want to talk to me or date me because for some reason every single person I came across for someone had this perception of me. So it was so hard in school, everybody would be all in my face, always wanted to be around me but would always go behind my back and say hurtful shit. The nuggets that used to call me gay all the time in school would try to congratulate me and ask me for some shout outs now. But anything y'all have heard about me being gay is a lie. I've only talked to women, I've only dated women, and I've always liked women, and that's the only thing I've ever liked. For the ones I see in the comments calling me F y'all, and go find some proof and not put together fake ass messages. Look, remember the messages I had in my previous video? Now, does this necessarily mean, oh my god, he was in a relationship with Eric? For all we know, you know, he says he, so you trying to tell me you gave Eric my number? Bro, you're not stopping nobody, career. And then he made the threats, right? I swear to G that I'm putting money on y'all head. Watch y'all back and I know where the F he's staying. Maybe Eric is someone that used to be friends with Troy and that's why he said that but If you go back to his video, he never said anything about oh Yeah, I know an Eric or I think I know who this is that Eric guy he, He's a hater guys like he never said anything. He acted like he never knew him But then he's acting like I know where he lived, but again, I could be taking this out of context, but why would you threaten someone like that? Making an assumption that this is real, it's a real message. But do I understand the context of it? No. But why would you make threats like that to someone? Seriously, why would you? Was it because she gave the number to Eric? Or was it because he outed you? Look, if I'm wrong, okay, look. Trey, you know where my YouTube is or whatever. Hit me up, man. I'm more than happy to expose those people that were exposing you or giving fake messages if you know who they are. Because you clearly do because of that message. And if it's fake, let me know. And I'll correct it in the next video. But it looks real. It really does look real. And look, as well as that, obviously Trey is feminine. Uh, I think he's balanced, you know, he got a bit of feminine and masculine ability. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, a lot of these girls, they love men who got feminine and masculine ability, you know? So, nothing wrong with that. But I honestly thought Armin and Trey <laughs> were both gay ages ago. Remember that? <laughs> if anyone turns around and be like, yeah, Trey's masculine, you know they're full of shit because you're not. You, you got femininity and there's nothing wrong with that. It's cute, okay? Moving on. I'm childish, but my brother isn't feminine, 100. We held a homie down even when motherfuckers turned their back on bro. We was there 100, especially my childish ass, lol. And this what I get for being a homie, huh? All good, Trey Taylor. I love you, bro. Let's keep winning. Yes, your dumb asses did hold a homie down. Why would you hold someone down? 
who put one of your closest friend's body at risk. He went around doing dirty things to dirty people. You're like, oh, he did all this effed up ish to Queen and he's holding Queen's money allegedly and all this other stuff. So he's my homie, I'm gonna hold him down. Like, I get, I, unless Chris was friends before them, then I would understand. But from what I know, I thought it was Queen. I could be wrong. To see what he's done to other people, scamming little children. I guess it blew up in your face. Don't hang out with dickheads. He's a bad guy, but we're gonna hold him down because you know we're loyal and we're good friends. Sometimes you have to turn around and not chill with those friends that are in their head. Sometimes you have to make that decision because Nine out of ten chances, those people are gonna turn around and do the same shit to you. Chris ended up posting on Snapchat saying, Never weird, bro. I've never been the type to run to the internet that when I had some number. N's gay as F. Like I said, F all y'all. Last thing I'm saying. N soft. Like I said, F all of y'all. Last thing I'm saying. You want to say Trey and Armin are soft as F, but yet your comments are disabled, bruh. They're disabled. Who's the soft one now? You can't even handle any criticism that you have to turn off your comments. Weak as sh. Let's move on to the next drama. So, So Illuminati got really pissed at Desiree. This shit was funny. Roll it. And then now you're in a video with Duck Duck Reacts with Duck Reacts? Flight. <laughs> and Soul Illuminati is so funny, man. Okay, but look, Soul. I right? the, the way you pause that picture, it looks really wrong, by the way. It's <laughs> changing you guys there. Like, uh, why is you mad that Desiree in the same room with Flights? You had a chance to be with Desiree, okay? She wanted to hang out with you a few times, but you didn't get your way, you wanted those buns. You wanted to play with the tutun, but you didn't get to play with the tutun, bro. She didn't want to give it to you, and that's what I like about Desiree. Desiree's smart. You had many opportunities to hang out with Desiree, and now she with flight you mad. You should have be you should have made your move long ago. But the thing is, I think Sol Illuminati, he just wants the tutun, honestly. That's that's all he wants. He just wants her tutun. Flight was so infatuated, man. Did you see his face? <laughs> you know Flight is in love already, okay? He'd be jumping into relationships so quick, and then he'd be bullshitting about a girl and jumping out. I used to fuck with Flights and his videos, but now I unsubscribe because he's a bullshit artist. He lied a lot. You can check it out on that video there. I had... I don't hate you, I just don't like fake bitches, you know, and I called you out because you lied. More about that, I actually done a video on Desiree and Soul Illuminati. That video is so lit. It's pretty funny, you gotta check it out. Do you guys want me to do a video called Why Everyone Hates Desiree? Because I always wondered why. Why do so many people have so much issues with her and beef? I'm like, she had to do something evil for that many people to dislike her. Maybe she didn't give her a tutun and that's why they're mad. Because most of the people that are mad at her are guys. So, I'm curious. Anyway guys, I know I'm your guilty pleasure. So make sure to hit the subscribe button with the bell. Smash that like button. Let's get to that goal goal. And I'll see you guys in another drama video.